All right, what's up guys? So lately there's been the merger, right, of the Wicked Colors and the AutoWire Colors. So it makes the question, you know, what paint do I use? Much easier to explain. Um, so here's my recommendations on what paint you should use. Um, again, it's ultimately your choice. I'm just here to explain to you and tell you what the data sheets say. Um, again, if you want to read this all for yourself, you go to createxttech.com and you can read the data sheets for yourself and take your own recommendations from there. Again, we, we've tried to send as many people over there as possible so that everybody can get the same knowledge and you know, it kind of makes it easier to explain. If you read it yourself, you know, you know it kind of explains it for itself. So anyway, my recommendations, again, uh, we got three lines now, basically. Uh, again, there's the Scenics line, but it's pretty specific to you know, being outdoor type stuff. Um, but for general, the three lines that most people and are available more widely are the original Createx airbrush colors, the Wicked line, the Wicked colors, um, and the Createx illustration colors. Um, and so these are the three that I would recommend most people work with. Um, and we're going to go over which one is which. So if you're painting on shirts, right? So if you want to paint on shirts, um, hats, you know, shoes, anything kind of with a porous surface, you're going to want to use the Createx airbrush colors, the original line, and you're going to want to reduce it as little as possible. Honestly, when you're spraying on shirts, you're going to want to use about 40 PSI, a 0.5 millimeter needle, and you should be able to spray fine lines and everything just with painting straight out of the bottle in most cases. Um, if anything, maybe a 5% reduction, maybe. Um, and the reason you don't want to reduce on shirts is you don't want to ca cause saturation. And the more you reduce, uh, the more the shirt's going to get wet with the reducer and, and it's going to take longer for it to dry. Uh, you'll have much better results spraying the paint straight out of the bottle with a higher PSI and a wider needle. That's traditionally the way we spray shirts. That's the way it's been done forever. That's the way I still do it. That's the way a lot of artists still do it. And it's the best way to get the best results that are going to last that you can heat press in. Uh, from, again, the original airbrush colors is the only line that I know of and that the data sheets say that you can actually heat press into a fabric and it'll stay. All right, so the original line is the only line that's designed to be heat pressed into a fabric. So you could heat press it in, you could heat it up and it makes it pretty permanent. It's not really going to fade, it's not going to wash off or anything like that. I have videos showing me washing airbrush shirts and again the way those are done is with the original airbrush colors being heat pressed into the fabric. Moving from there, if you're gonna do automotive work, right? If you're gonna do motorcycles, vehicles, stuff like that, the line that I've been using for a while and that the data sheet says, again, the Wicked line is made using an automotive grade pigment and it's said that for a very long time and that's why I've been using that paint for vehicles for a while, you know? I kind of opted out of the auto air colors once these came in to be, because it says right there in the data sheet that these are automotive grade and they stick amazing. And yeah, now with their new formula and the whole merger of everything makes it really easy to just be like, use the Wicked set, it's designed for it and it's made for it and it's the way it's been from the beginning, but now they've enhanced the formula and made it even better. So for automotive applications, uh, the Wicked sets, which you're gonna wanna go with. <clears throat> now, if you're doing artwork, right? Like if you're doing these paintings up here and stuff like that, you're going to want to use the Createx illustration colors. And the reason I recommend that over any of these for doing artwork is because it's the smoothest flowing out of the bottle. So even with, <clears throat> you can reduce these down, um, but you'll need to reduce this a lot less and you'll be able to keep more of the opacity of the paint um, by using the illustration line. Now, I'm not sure how well this holds up to the sun and stuff like that. So that's why I would recommend the auto, uh, the Wicked line here um, for automotive applications and not, you know, the illustration set, even though it's smooth. The illustration set, again, it's designed to be sprayed on artwork. And yeah, if you want to increase the durability of, it, of any of these paints, um, you can always use the 4050, the Createx UVLS Clear. Um, it's available in gloss, matte, and satin. And typically for artwork, uh, you're going to want to use the matte. Um, the shiny from the gloss will make it your artwork uh, on canvas. Again, I'm speaking of artwork on canvas. 
the, the shiny of the gloss will make the canvas uh, kind of hard to see from some angles um, and the matte provides the most clarity on canvas. Again, if you're doing something flat, if you're doing something really flat, like a metal panel, something like that, the gloss will probably do just fine. <clears throat> Speaking of the 4050, um, a lot of people ask me, how well does it hold up? How well does it hold up? Well, according to the data sheets, for automotive applications, it's more of an artwork sealer. So you lay it over your artwork, to seal in your artwork. You can also lay in, uh, you know, a good, Wicked um, Createx Autoborn sealer and use the 4050 to kind of as an auto protection. <clears throat> but the data sheet says again to use at least a 2K clear over the artwork on automotive applications to provide the most durability and the, the best, um, just the best overall look. For my personal testing, I've used this stuff on like my mailbox, on you know, like that little controller you guys see me do the video of and stuff like that and it holds up amazing it looks great and even over time it still retains its shiny especially like on my mailbox it sits outside it's been snowed on rain on you know hot cold whatever you name it below freezing temperatures you know above 100 temperatures and it still looks good and it doesn't have an automotive top coat on it just the 4050 itself looks great so you kind of got to Go with your gut on that one if i would say for some most projects like that where maybe it's not gonna you know like a mailbox and you know other projects like that i would say the 4050 is probably just fine for miniatures 4052 give it that that matte look you know but also it'll be protected so if you need to clean it and stuff like that you don't have to worry so much about messing up the paint <sighs> all that being said that's the easiest way to explain it the candy is designed to be used with the 4050 going forward. Um, I would recommend the 4050 over the 4030 at this point for most projects, pretty much any project. Uh, the Candy 2.0 uh, really mixes in well with the gloss um, and oh, with any of the UVLS clears, it mixes in well. It holds its position very good and it sprays really good. Do not use it on shirts. It's not designed for shirts and you will have a bad time if you spray this on the shirt. Just letting you know up, up front, use the original line for shirts, fabrics, textiles, anything like that. Wicked line, automotive, artwork, use the illustration, candy, automotive specifically. You could use it on artwork obviously as well, but don't use it on t-shirts. 4050 gloss, great protection, great sealant for all your artwork. And I hope that helps you guys out. We'll see you guys in the next video. Later.